Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're going to be talking about vectors and passing them to functions. I'm going to tell you what you need to know to make sure you do that in the correct, best way. Now, before we get started, check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Now when you have a vector and you want to pass it to a function, it's very simple. We're going to start by creating a void function and all it's going to do is it's going to print the vector. Now what you're going to pass into this is this vector, so we need to create a parameter to store that, which is going to be of the same type. So it's going to be a vector of type int, and you can name it whatever you want. It does not have to match this variable here. Now inside of this function, we can access the size of this vector using a method, and that's one of the huge pluses of using vectors is they always know their size. So I'll show you that inside of a for loop, We'll just say int i equals zero, i is less than data dot size, i plus plus. So that is the technique to iterate through this entire vector, and then inside of the for loop, we can output each element using c out and accessing data index i. And then I'll just put a tab character right there. Now when I compile this, you want to make sure that you put standard equals c plus plus 11. So when we output this, Oh yeah, we should probably call that function. So what we need to do is say print vector and pass in data. So that is how you would call the function. Now when I compile and run, you can see it outputs one, two, three. If you want to get this on a new line, all you got to do is output a new line right here. Just like that, beautiful. And there you go. Now the big thing you got to know with vectors is that this variable here and this variable here are two separate variables. The data here is actually copied into this variable here. That means any changes we do to the vector inside of this function do not exist inside of main. To show that, we can call a function pushback, so we can say data.pushback, and then pass some data in here, let's just say the value 12, and then if this was the same variable, every time we ran this function, a new 12 would be added to that vector. But you're gonna see that's not the case, because if I call this print vector a couple of times, it's just going to output the same array every single time. When we run this, you can see it's always 1, 2, 3, 12. That's because we add the 12, the function finishes, we call it again, and it starts from scratch. Adding the 12, printing it, and then going back to main. The way around this, if you want to share memory from this vector, all you have to do is add an amper sand or stand or whatever it's called, the and sign, right here before the variable name. Now it's going to basically copy the memory location, which is called passing by reference. Now when we run this, you can see every single time a new 12 is appended to the vector. When should you pass by value and when should you pass by reference? Well, if you have a huge vector, you might not want to copy by value because that's going to use a lot of 